Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, I told you earlier, we we're talking a little bit about our second reading the unusual book of Revelation. Now, some people say Revelations. There's only one Revelation. Unusual book showing a grand event full of strange creatures, odd people, and all of it revolving around a lamb. A lamb who looks like he was slain comes on a scene, takes a stroll, a scroll, and everyone kind of freaks out in a good way. Because this slain slain lamb was worthy to do it. That's it. That's our text. See you next week. (laughs) Didn't realize how perfect this, this hymn was until we sang it. But there's always more to the book of Revelation. Number one, when you read the book of Revelation, it's a symbolic book. It's not meant to be read literally, like a newspaper. You cannot read it that way. It's not the way it was written. It's not what his intent was. But rather, it's got multiple descriptions of Jesus and his church. Both in the world now and at the judgment on the last day. So whenever you read the book of Revelation, you should always kind of go back to the life and words of Jesus in the Old Testament and in the life in the church. Now realize, it was written during a time when things were not going so well in the world and they were persecuting Christians. And when God revealed this book, this, new, this revelation to John, they didn't want it being captured. So they wrote it in a code. So only the Christians would understand. Because otherwise, it would be lost. There's only one writing. They didn't copy it off right away. It was like a mimeograph. See, I go back in history in the 70s. Remember the mimeograph? (laughs) But copiers or or computers, you know, like instant, well, they didn't have it. Well, that's why they wrote it in the code. But let's get back. Let's let's get back to the lamb. Worthy is a lamb who was slain. The slain lamb lives. In his hand is the fate of the world. Obviously, we know who the lamb is, right? Jesus. Yeah, it's not Mary's lamb. It's Jesus. Who takes away the sin of the world. He alone is worthy. So if he alone is worthy, what does it say about us? (laughs) We're not worthy. You know... Since coming here, Terry and I have had discussions about trying. I remember, Terry, do you remember the first thing I said when you said try? What was my response? I was. You didn't think we, you thought we did or we didn't. Yeah, I was a little uncomfortable with that. 
And then, and then preparing this sermon, I, I, I kind of realized why I'm uncomfortable with that. Our justification before God is not us. Your, your good works, um, how do I say that nicely because we're on tape all over the internet. The Bible says it's pretty, they're pretty bad, like dung. That's a nice word. <laughs> That's putting it nicely. What does it say about the good works, about our good works that we try to do? What about those things that are really good for society? They're not very good. What about the non-believer who's giving presents or food at Christmas time or at Thanksgiving or on a monthly basis or a weekly basis for people in need? They're really, really bad. As far as God is concerned, those are no good. Well, fires are no good, and, and the non-believers are no good. Why do them? Who are we? This is where it gets interactive. Who are we? Whose are we? Children of God. Children of God. I'm not sure exactly where that came from. <laughs> right here. Children of God. We're his children. We are holy because he is. Period. We don't deserve anything but the wrath of God. But it is by his grace. He's full of grace and mercy. He sent his son to die for us. He is the only one that is worthy, not us. You look at our works, the works do not make a person worthy. Flip it around. The person makes the works worthy. Christ makes the works worthy. Because of who we are in Christ, because of our faith in Christ, our, however you want to describe faith, trust, he makes our works worthy. Not us. As Terry and I would discuss that thing about trying Trying is not possible in our justification before God. We can't. Because only Christ is worthy. He has done it all. He's, he's completed it. It's, it's finished. Trust him. Your sins are forgiven. He has given you forgiveness of sin, life, life and salvation. Now, if you want to try, here we go. Put that on your, the fancy church word called sanctification. Because as far as our approaching God, our, our justification approaching him, Christ did that all completely. Because he is worthy. Do you remember our confession earlier? Do you know what we said? I gotta go back, otherwise I gotta say the whole thing. That's how I got it memorized. So if I wanna break it down, I gotta go back into it. And I might be actually thinking of a different, well, God is faithful and just, right? 
He forgives us our sins. But what's the other part of that? He forgives us and then he cleanses us. What is a cleansing? You know what this is back here? Sorry, I'm going to move on you. I always got to warm the camera guy. What's this? Baptismal font. And then I'm going to move again. Sorry. I'm like a moving target. We are cleansed in the waters of baptism. But that is not the end. It is only beginning. Because we live in a world that's full of sin. We are corrupted. The whole world is corrupted. Lately, that's pretty easy to see. But it's been that way ever since Adam and Eve sinned. And it stays with us today. Jesus has paid the price. He is the worthy one. He being the worthy one, we can come to this place and thank him, praise him for what he has done because he is worthy. Now, do we have to knock ourselves down and put like they used to sackcloth and everything else? No. We know are we, for, we are forgiven, right? Are you forgiven? Yes, yes, we did it earlier, we're going to do it again in communion. No, no, we're not doing it, he's doing it. <laughs> Jesus is doing it, because he is the worthy one. And he makes our works worthy. It is he that does it. He is the light of the world. Look at St. Paul in our gospel. St. Paul was not a nice guy. Before. He was killing Christians. He hated Christians. Ain't different than today? Yeah. I don't, anybody got shot at or hung or for being a Christian? No. <laughs> they were after the disciples. Afterwards, they were after Paul. They poisoned John. Now, maybe it will happen later on. Who knows? But our life is with Jesus. Wherever heaven is, it's with Jesus. We're just here for a little while. So trust in him. That is how we, we can rejoice. And we rejoice with those that have gone before us, that die, have died in the faith. Because they, when we sing and we, when we rejoice, we are rejoicing with them. Yeah, we can't see them. We can't touch them. But they are here among us, praising God and rejoicing. Remember the invisible church. The church of God in heaven. Worthy is the Lamb. And we can praise God for that because we know we are not. But we know we are covered by his blood. And we know he continues to sanctify us. In other words, make us holy. But the good part is before the stuff we didn't have to try at, or we couldn't even try at, that justification before God, he's done it. We can approach him. And we will live. 
To him be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the true faith in Christ until life everlasting. Amen.